Hello everyone, it's the Lombard here, and welcome to another movie review. As you can tell by the way I'm speaking to you, it's because I'm reviewing a movie that I don't particularly care for. But it comes from one of my favorite teams of directors, and from their animation studio, Rankin Bass. Everyone knows them for their Christmas specials, but they also made like a handful of movies for theaters. Most of them are not well known, but a couple have grown a following. But unfortunately, their last movie for theaters is nothing special. To me, anyway. And while it did well and gained lots of praise, I don't think it should. And this film I'm talking about is... The Last Unicorn. The movie is based on a novel of the same name by Peter S. Beagle, who also wrote the screenplay for the film. A unicorn has been told of being the last of her kind, but she ventures out to find where others like her are being kept. And along the way, she gets captured and put in a traveling carnival, where a magician named Smendrick frees and joins her in the quest. And both are joined later by a woman named Molly Gru, as they head to the castle of Kate Haggard, while also avoiding the Red Bull that chases down unicorns. Now, a film like this could work. It has a basic story and nice character designs, but it's pretty boring. It often gets jumbled in its storytelling, its characters are lame, and... Well, let's start with the story problems. While the story is basic, it goes into detours that don't make sense, even for a fantasy. One is that men can't see unicorns, and those that possess magic can. And this is fine, but what about those that can see them too? The royals and Molly, who is not of royal blood or possess any magic. How can they see them? They are, for lack of a better word, men. They're just people. Of course, the carnival owner, Mommy Fortuna, puts a spell on the cat of animals so that the humans can see that they are mythical creatures. And that's fine too, but it's sort of weird that the unicorn just sees the animals and not the creatures. 80s fantasies are just confusing. But by far, the biggest problem for me came from when the Unicorn, Spendrick, and Molly are arriving at the castle all the way to the climax. As the three are approaching the castle, the Red Bull started chasing the Unicorn, and Spendrick turns her into a human so the bull can avoid her. And so, under the name Lady Amalthea, the Unicorn starts to forget her quest, and even being a Unicorn, as her human form takes hold. Now, turning a Unicorn into a human isn't that bad, but... Why does her unicorn mind leave her body? It really shouldn't. When Odette and Tiana turn into animals, they still have their human mind and goal to get to. Even Twilight Sparkle when she enters the human realm still kept her alicorn mind in mission. And these three came out years later after this. By making the unicorn become more human, it just wastes time, becomes dull, and the story loses focus. So, it's fine if she's human, but leave the unicorn mind alone. Just let it stay. But then, how come Smendrick never knows the side effects of his magic? He's said to have true magic, but his magic is more of an apprentice's magic. In fact, Mickey Mouse makes a better magician than he does. But being this a Reagan Bass film, there has to be some good songs in it. There isn't. Most of the songs are performed by America, but... I don't remember much of them. None of them really stand out apart from one or two lyrics, but that's about it. So strange considering the songs are one of the best parts of any Reckonbass show. But even with all of this, the actors who voice the characters are... sort of fine. Alan Arkin voices Mendrick the Magician. Jeff Bridges voices Prince Lear. Mia Farrell voices The Last Unicorn slash Lady Amalthea. Tammy Grimes voices Molly Gru. Robert Klein voices the Butterfly, Angela Lansbury voices Mommy Fortuna, Christopher Lee voices King Haggard, Keenan Wynn voices Captain Cully, Paul Frez voices the Talking Cat, Malbrook, and Living Tree, and Ran Aberjonas voices the Speaking Skull. As a whole, this movie is not worth sitting through. The characters, while having fine designs, are not interesting enough. The story at times feels complicated, the songs are quite forgettable, and the animation is okay. Being the last theatrical film from directors Arthur Rankin Jr. and Jules Bash, it's quite a shame that it's not as good as their TV specials. It could have been an okay film, but no. 
Its own characters, story, and songs can't make do when the film loses focus at times and becomes a jumbled and boring mess. I know this film has a big following, but I'm not going to be a part of that. But even with Rankin Bass having done a few theatrical films, this one, I'm sorry to say, would have to be my least favorite from them. So today, this movie will be given a rating of two stars.